Uparts is an initialism for out-of-place artifacts, and is a bit of a catch-all term for mysterious objects that are found at archaeological sites that seemingly defy explanation. Upatsu is also the original name for what is now the Chronomaly archetype in English-speaking regions, and one that I find absolutely fascinating. The artifacts, in inverted commas, really stretch the colloquial definition, but are so diverse and unique that I simply had to make a video talking about their real-world inspirations. So, let's take a world tour. But first, let's get this one over with. Starting with an entry which is out of this world, we have a stand-in for a rather regrettable trend in the field of wild speculation. Chronomaly Crystal Chrononaut is an example of an ancient alien. At least, going off the translated Japanese name, Upart's Crystal Alien. Although, this card is not a member of the alien archetype, which probably explains the regionalized name. The English name is pretty similar, although it does imply that the monster might be a time traveler, which might also fit. Aliens could travel interstellar distances, and probably through time as well. Anyway, the ancient aliens hypothesis is in the zeitgeist. Probably first popularized by Chariots of the Gods, then maybe this meme, and of course being featured prominently in the film Prometheus. The idea of aliens having visited Earth in the distant past, and somehow influenced human development, is a blight to archaeology and cultural blasphemy in the form of historical erasure of accomplishments. This card does not reference any particular artifact, but I am going to use it to generalize all these ancient alien conspiracies to RARs, or Real Artifacts, Wrong Rationale. Misinterpreting evidence, whether intentionally or otherwise, and almost always out of context, this is simply not good archaeology. With that out of the way, we can proceed to our world tour properly, starting where it all began, in ancient Egypt. Chronomaly Pyramid Eye Tablet is supposedly based on the Emerald Tablet, but I think the inspiration is more general, with the Eye of Wujat being featured prominently in the artwork. Side note, I've been calling this the Eye of Wajat since I was a kid, which is close to one of the accepted pronunciations, but I believe that the Uja Eye is also a correct pronunciation, as seen in Spelunky. As far as authenticity, I'm going to save discussion on the Emerald Tablet for a Yu-Gi-Oh! Inspirations video dealing with alchemy, but the Eye of Wajat is definitely a real symbol based on the local goddess of the city of Dep. Staying in Egypt, we now move to the Giza Plateau. Chronomaly Winged Sphinx is almost definitely based off the Great Sphinx of Giza. The Sphinx is a massive monument made of bedrock and later restored with limestone. The Sphinx is one of the most well-known landmarks in the world, and has already been referenced in ancient Egyptian-inspired Yu-Gi-Oh, with Guardian Sphinx probably being the best example. The monument is authentic, but there's a good deal of mystery around it. Like why does the Sphinx not have wings? Well, most Egyptian sphinxes lacked wings. Plus, it would probably be difficult to construct the wings featured in the Chronomaly's artwork. What happened to the nose? And what is with the secret passageway behind the sphinx? For those last two, I'm out of answers. The sphinx is not exactly out of place, but definitely an anomalous structure. Still silently whispering riddles. From the Nile River to the Indus River Basin, we are moving to another general topic. Like the Eye of Wujat, the mana are a concept or object which crops up in various regions and time periods, but is associated closely with its religious roots. Chronomaly Vimana is based on the mythological flying chariots, or perhaps floating palaces, which were mentioned in Hindu text and Jain literature. The chariots or levitating structures of the gods are based on the literal interpretations of the text, and later revisions of the Rig Veda omit the Vimana. Vimana may also be a metaphor or, or perhaps a flowery way of describing a solar year. Vimana do exist in literature and artwork, but I'm going to chalk this up to another RAR. I guess the A stands for artwork this time. Moving on to a more concrete topic, or perhaps more fittingly a ceramic one, we move to Japan, the place where Yu-Gi-Oh actually began, or at least the manga series which inspired the game. Upatsu. Madoro Goremu Shakoki 
is the Japanese name for Chronomaly Mud Golem. And I want to point out the original name to prevent confusion with golems from Jewish folklore. This card is based on Dogu, likely this one in particular. Yu-Gi-Oh! actually has a few Dogu-inspired cards, like Maharagi, Orikalko Sunaros, and, um, Dogu. A little on the nose with that one. The purpose behind these mysterious earthen figures is unknown, but it is suspected that they might have been ornamental, or perhaps used as ritual vessels to transfer illness into, before smashing them to remove the illness from the patient. In Chariots of the Gods, the stylized eyes, or goggles, are interpreted as astronaut equipment. No, this is just an artistic choice on what otherwise reminds me of Venus carvings, which have been seen all over the world. Another RAR. Why is it so hard to believe that ancient people might have made clay statues? We're going to take a quick detour to Polynesia to look at another set of earthen human figures. Only these are much more massive. Chronomaly Moai, and I guess Moai Carrier, depict the Moai statues of Easter Island in Polynesia, which were carved by the Rapa Nui people. This is not the first depiction of the Moai in Yu-Gi-Oh, as they are the basis for the cards The Statue of Easter Island and Moai Interceptor Cannon, where they are able to shoot lasers. The real structures do not shoot lasers, by the way. What is mysterious about the statues is how they were transported across the island. Moai Carrier is one hypothesis, but I think the more likely explanation is that they were walked to their locations by teams with ropes. There are some pretty convincing demonstration videos you can watch. To me, this is less an anomaly and more a marvel of human ingenuity, strength, and coordination. This is probably another good candidate for the RAR category. Quick tangent, put a quarter in the jar, have you ever wondered why Nosepass gets a hat when it evolves? The red hat is a reference to how Moai originally had cylindrical red headwear, carved from a different type of stone. The red stone weathered faster than the stone the Moai are carved from, so most of them are missing their hats now. I just thought that it was a cool little detail in the Pokemon's design, and since I include the Pokemon TCG cards, it's sort of on topic. Returning to our Yu-Gi-Oh! inspired tour, we move to the Babel Governorate Iraq. Chronomaly City Babylon appears to be a close-up of an amphitheater, with some period-appropriate buildings in the background. This card is obviously inspired by the city of Babylon, capital of the Babylon Empire. What I find fascinating about this card, though, is the particular choice in artwork. I think it's modeled after this amphitheater, which is definitely a colossal engineering project, but not what the city is best known for. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon were one of the wonders of the world, which has not survived to the modern day. I'm not sure why they were not chosen for this field spell's artwork, but I still like the amphitheater. With that, we have finished the second leg of our tour, and will be moving on to Europe, starting with another concept instead of an actual object, this time in Greece. Chronomaly Gordian Knot is based on the legendary Gordian Knot. Legendary in the sense of probably fictitious. To abbreviate the fable, a knot so intricate and tight was tied to an ox cart with the prophecy that whosoever unravels the knot will go on to conquer Asia. Sort of like the sword in the stone with King Arthur. Alexander the Great then rose to the challenge, and thinking it did not matter how the knot was unraveled, sliced through it with his sword. Note that some accounts say that he took the linchpin from the yoke, exposing the ends of the cord, thus making the knot trivial. Either way, this leads to the expression cutting the Gordian knot, which is solving a problem by eliminating or ignoring perceived constraints. This can either be seen as cheating or lateral thinking, depending on who you ask. But to me, it just reminds me of this image. Working intelligently by circumventing challenge is not always the best solution. So the Gordian knot is a metaphor, although an actual knot may have existed in the past. That makes this more of an analogy than an artifact, so I do not know how to grade it for authenticity. Real asterisk? The visual interpretation of the card is fine, as the knot looks quite tough to me. From Greece to Turkey, we discover a massive trove of archaeological knowledge. Number 36, Chronomaly Chateau Hyuk, is a levitating city, 
based on the archaeological site of the same name, but different spelling. Speaking of which, isn't Turkey changing its name to this now? To stop with all the food puns for some reason. Weird. This site in Turkey is incredibly well preserved considering the structures are close to 9,000 years old. This site is real and a world treasure for unlocking the secrets of Neolithic proto-cities. This card actually depicts the city as a power source though, which powers number 33 Kronomli Machu Mech, whose name is tangentially related to the Incan citadel of Machu Picchu in Peru. But the two locations bear little similarity outside of being massive stone and earthwork projects. Plus, we are still in Europe. Peru is on the next continent. So instead, we are going to be moving to another ancient kingdom. Chronomaly Tuspa Rocket is allegedly a 3,000-year-old carving originating from the Uratu Kingdom in the Armenian Highlands. Allegedly because the artifact is fake. It appears to be a plaster cast made from a mold based on a science fiction toy. But let's take a minute to look at that artwork. Note how the pilot's face is obscured by the sheen, as the actual artifact is missing its head. In addition, the rocket reminds me of the H.R. Giger concept art for the space jockey, but that is almost surely a coincidence. Regardless, this is not evidence of ancient aliens, and is likely about 50 or 60 years old, at most. We are now going to digress back to Greece for some architectural appreciation. Chronomaly Temple Trilithon is based on Trilithon or the Trilith building technique. This technique uses vertical pillars or posts to support horizontal beams or lentils. I think the Trilith name comes from the two supporting stones necessary to support the beam or three stones in total, hence Tri-Lith. This building technique is pretty common throughout the world, but the artwork seems Greco-Roman to me, and in the context of a temple, I would say that this card is loosely based on the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. This is a bit of a conjecture, but I don't think it's too unfounded. There is, however, a much more famous trilith structure in Europe, and it even has its own chronomaly card. Excuse the detour, as we will eventually be getting back to Rome, as all roads lead there after all. But first, we need to take a trip to the UK. Despite the name, Stonehenge Methods is Chronomaly support, and is actually pretty similar to Hero Signal in effect, now that I look at it. I think this is the only in-archetype card for the video that does not have Chronomaly in its name. Stonehenge needs no introduction, as the mysterious megalithic structure in England is among perhaps the most renowned artifacts in the series. And has, of course, been connected with aliens as another RAR. The purpose of Stonehenge has been much debated, but leading hypotheses are for religious significance, especially since there are burial mounds close by, or, more interestingly, for celestial observation, specifically recording and predicting solstices. Speaking of which, let's move on to another astrological artifact, this time in Nebra, Germany. Chronomaly Nebra Disc is a depiction of the Nebra Sky Disc, specifically a slightly distorted take on what the disc used to look like. Here is the actual disc for reference, and here is an image progression on how it was altered over time. The disc is an exquisite artifact, despite being 3600 years old. Originally it was thought to be a forgery, but has been authenticated by means of microphotography of the corrosion crystals, which cannot be forged. Finding such a unique and well-preserved piece of metalwork in itself is a little anomalous, but when we consider the greater implications of Bronze Age sky gazing, this artifact may be one of the first artistic depictions of the cosmos. Beyond that, some have speculated that the disc may be used to record and calculate celestial events, like solstices, potentially making the disc a portable Stonehenge. We are now going to take a look at another object, but one which does not necessarily have a real-world analog. So I'm going to be generalizing its location to Portugal. You'll see why in a second. Chronomaly Magella Globe borrows the name from the first explorer to lead an expedition to circumnavigate the globe, although the man himself did not survive the voyage. I'm not sure if there is an artifact that this card directly corresponds to, but here is an image of the oldest surviving globe, 
which actually would have been around when Magellan was sailing, although I cannot confirm that he had access to this globe or even a facsimile. I think the idea behind the card is that how would Magellan know how to get around the world if he didn't have a globe? Or perhaps other mariners thinking that the world was flat. People have known that the world is close to spherical since around 300 BC. Speaking of around 300 BC, that is about the period when Plato was philosophizing, and we should probably get back to Greece for the next one. Atlas is a Greek mythological figure, specifically a titan who is punished for his actions in the War of the Titans. Atlas is forced to bear the weight of the world on his shoulders, literally. The name Atlas is also important etymologically, as his name is the root of the Atlantic Ocean and Atlantis. Atlantis, or rather Atlantis Nessos, literally means Atlas's island, and is a fictional island mentioned in the Timaeus and Critias dialogues. Names which you may be familiar with alongside the third dialogue in the trilogy, Hermocrates. These dialogues are where the legendary dragon spells, as well as the legendary knights, get their names. Although Hermocrates is abbreviated to Hermos. In Plato's dialogues, Atlantis is not a literal city-state from ancient times, but a means to illustrate how a utopian society may interact with the rest of the world. You know, before it ultimately sank into the sea. Centuries later, the works of Plato were interpreted as historical tradition, leading to the mythical sunken city and perhaps the entire trope of lost civilizations. I think this is a case of a century-old RAR. Real analogy, wrong rationale. Back to Chronomaly Atlantis, and I guess it's chaos form. The card's artwork looked to me to be a hybrid between the Titan and the landmass, complete with water feature. This is a pretty cool interpretation, and it even incorporates other chronomalies in its artwork to better reflect scale. And one more thing. I know, I know, tangents upon tangents. But I actually want to point out that the C6 effect is almost the anime Earthbound Immortal Condor effect. And I think we have time to very briefly mention the Nazca geoglyphs before we move on to the South American chronomalies. The Nazca lines are massive geoglyphs in Peru, which inspired the Earthbound Immortal card series. To briefly show them off, there is Uru, based on the spider glyph, Asla Piscu, based on the hummingbird glyph, Kusulu, based off of the monkey, Kakapak Apu, based off of the giant, which is sometimes called the astronaut. Hey, another callback. Chaku Chahua, based off of the orca cliff, then the aforementioned apostrophe. Wirachoka Raska, based off the condor cliff. There's also Kaka Rehua, based off the lizard cliff, which is pretty hard to find a good reference picture online, since someone decided to build a highway through this centuries old landmark. But I need to get back on track before I get too upset. Sticking in Peru, we have the Ica province. Chronomaly Cabrera Trebuchet is based off the Ica stones. Can't you tell? What if I make it a little bigger? Maybe highlight the stones and accentuate them with an obnoxious red circle? Even if the artwork doesn't, at least the card name makes the inspiration clear, as the Ica stones were popularized by Javier Cabrera da Kea. After being acquired from Basio, these carved stones depict flora and fauna. A lot of people are drawn to those which contain both humans and dinosaurs together, implying that the two once coexisted. These are actually fake. Ushchuya manufactured them using power tools. Theoretically, these are artifacts, but ones from the 20th century, so I don't think that counts. Let's move to Brazil to investigate another series of artifacts of dubious authenticity. Chronomaly Crystal Skull is based off of one of a handful of skulls carved from Brazilian quartz crystal. I phrased that previous sentence carefully, because although the material originates in Brazil, the skulls were actually carved in Europe, likely in Eider Oberstein, Germany, in the mid-19th century. These skulls are fake, carved with modern jeweler's tools but that hasn't stopped them from gaining cultural significance, with Dan Aykroyd using the artifacts to market his vodka, and even inspiring the best Indiana Jones film. No, I will not be taking questions. Anyway, we need to keep up the pace as we now journey to Colombia. 
Chronomaly Golden Jet is secretly Cyber Dragon support, but that's not relevant. This card is based on one of the Quambaya Gold Artifacts, specifically this one. This small figurine, alongside others, comes from the Middle Cacao River Valley and Southern Antioquian region of what is now Colombia. These are real artifacts, but calling them models of planes is disingenuous. This series of pieces are likely depictions of local fish, frogs, reptiles, and or insects and birds. This is another case of RARs. This one in particular reminds me of a brine shrimp, but that might just be me. We have all but finished our South American leg of the route, so let's visit Panama on our way to North America. Chronomaly Colossal Head is based on the giant stone heads carved by the Olmecs. These megalithic projects are mysterious because of the difficulty in transporting and carving the massive boulders required to make the heads. These are real, and were likely carved mostly using stone tools, then perhaps transported with ropes by hauling or maybe using boat transportation at some points. Impressive? Yes. Mysterious? I guess. But I wouldn't say that these are some inexplicable artifacts, and instead testaments to the patience and intelligence of man. Speaking of which, let's travel to Belize to examine the remains of another stone man. Chronomaly Crystal Bones is based on a particular skeleton in the Mayan Aktun Tunichil Maknal, which is also called the Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre, which is just a great name for a field spell. This skeleton is likely from a sacrificed teenage boy, but is colloquially known as the Crystal Maiden. It is the result of natural processes, with the skeleton becoming the basis for crystals to grow over the centuries. This skeleton is real, but the illustration on the card definitely took some artistic license. The coolest part about the card to me is that you can combine it with Crystal Skull to make Chronomaly Crystal Chrononaut. Can't stop for too long though, as we need to head next to Akambaro, Mexico. Chronomaly Akambaro figures are based on the Akambaro figures, and I think the card's artwork is based on this one in particular. It is hard to tell though, as there are about 33,000 of these small ceramic figurines which were unearthed in Akambaro, Guanahanta, Mexico. They were found by Valdemar Jules Rudd in 1944, who put an offer to pay local farmers for each figure found which might explain the astounding quantity of artifacts recovered, as they are all fake. I actually found a pretty savage takedown challenging the authenticity of the figurines by archaeologist Charles C. De Peso. Quote, Their surfaces displayed no signs of age, no dirt was packed into their crevices, and though some figurines were broken, no pieces were missing and no broken surfaces were worn. Furthermore, the excavation's stratigraphy clearly showed that the artifacts were placed in a recently dug hole with a mixture of surrounding archaeological layers. End quote. I could not have penned a more biting condemnation myself. But not to lose focus, our next stop is in the Tula Valley. Chronomaly Tula Guardian is based on these pillars from the ancient city of Tula in Tula de Alande, located in the Tula Valley. Such creative names! These Toltec warriors are examples of Atlantean columns, or human-shaped load-bearing supports, of course named after the titan we mentioned earlier. They sit atop Pyramid B, a monument to Quetzalcoatl. These are authentic, and the purpose of column supporting structures is pretty well accepted. Not sure why this one turns into a golem though, which actually seems to be a trope within the Chronomaly archetype. I guess normal rock statues aren't convincing attackers? which is a flawless segue to our next golem, this time coming from Teotihuacan, near what is now Mexico City. Next up is Chronomaly Aztec Mass Golem, and is that a bionicle? I'm not even kidding. The visual design of the golem looks to me like it might be inspired by the Lego toy line. As another tangent, since I can't stay on topic for more than two minutes at a time, Masks in Bionicle were integral to the plot with ceremonial significance and bestowing power to the wearers. The actual mask designs have varied inspirations, but the Golden Jungle Unity Mask in particular reminds me of similar Aztec masks. Back to the Golem though, I think this particular case is inspired by the mask of the goddess of Teotihuacan. We are keeping the Aztec motif, moving to El Zocalo, still in Mexico City. 
Chronomaly's sole monolith is based on the Aztec Sunstone, which is a 24-ton carving. That's one big paperweight. The stone actually serves a function outside of decoration, though, as it is an artistic depiction of Aztec mythology. Radiating outward, there is a deity in the center of the disc, surrounded by the four eras, during which humanity is destroyed and then reborn. In order, first humanity was devoured by monsters, then hurricane winds destroyed the earth and humanity was turned into monkeys, then there was a rain of fire and humanity was transformed into turkeys, then finally the world was flooded and humanity was turned into fish. Very interesting interpretation of the history of humanity, but back to the actual artifact. The stone is real and was a colossal undertaking both in the carving and transportation of the stone. Not exactly an out of place artifact, so much as a triumph of human determination. Next stop is what I think is the worst decontextualized artifact in the video. One which is completely in place if you consider evidence in the same site in Palunk. Chronomaly Mayan Machine is based off of what is misleadingly called the Palunk Astronaut. Specifically, the carving on the lid of the sarcophagus of Kenich Janab Pakal I. This noble was in a position roughly equivalent to a lord in the region of Palenque. This card depicts what has been labeled as Pakal's spacecraft, but in actuality, this is the head of a two-headed serpent being viewed at an odd angle. The image on the sarcophagus is likely meant to be an artistic representation of Pakal passing into the afterlife. Carvings found in the nearby Temple of the Cross and the Temple of the Foliated Cross support this interpretation. This is another case of a RAR, where the actual artifact exists, but the interpretation is just so reaching. No, this is not an ancient astronaut. I feel like I've said this all before. We are on to the last stop of the tour, ending in Yaqui, Mexico. Chronomaly Esperanza Glyph appears to be based on the mysterious stone in Esperanza, Mexico. This stone has been said to be a message or riddle from the sky, but has also been speculated to be a mile marker or similar landmark used to record a Mayan expedition. This one was pretty obscure and difficult to research, as I kept finding the same article copy-pasted across different sites. Full transparency, I'm not sure if this artifact is genuine or fraudulent. And on that note, that is the end of the Chronomaly cards which have been released at the time of writing. Of course, there are also some anime-exclusive Chronomaly cards as well, but I have to draw the line somewhere before I start pulling at other threads. Like this stone statue of the Aztecs card, which seems to be based on the goddess Kotali Q. I thought it deserves an honorary mention, since it is a rock with the word Aztec in its name. So, how do we wrap this all up now? CONCLUSION! Here are a few charts to summarize our findings. Technically, any fraudulent artifact planted at an archaeological site could be considered out of place, but should definitely not be part of the archaeological record. Many of these artifacts were misinterpreted by amateur researchers subject to heavy confirmation bias, and in situ become much less mysterious. And that is okay. It's okay to ask yourself and wonder, wow, how did they do that? And, although all the answers may not be out there, there are a lot of plausible hypotheses which have been proposed, none of which need to involve aliens. Bottom line, use Occam's razor and stop giving aliens all the credit. Humans are amazing, always have been, and hopefully always will be. Give our ancestors the respect and recognition they deserve, and be proud that you are part of the same imaginative, cooperative, and ingenious species who has never stopped creating.